Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Saurabh Sharma, as you know me. I'm your text teacher and today I'm going to teach you the new topic and in this video I'm going to start the new series on the term, on the chapter that is capital gain. As you all know, there are five heads in income tax. First is salary, second is house property, third is PGVP, fourth is capital gain and fifth is other source as uh, we know there are five heads and we till now we have studied the income under the head salary and income under the head house property we are skipping the third head because uh, it is not so important uh, with uh, with regard of examination so in this video we are going to start the new chapter that is capital gain okay and in the capital gain i am going to tell you the first topic that what the capital gain is and then after we will uh, move the, on the further topics okay so what the capital gain is so this is the basic question when we start any head the first section of any head is the basis of charge when you are talking about salary then you are uh, then you have to talk about section 15 that is basis of charge it means you have employer employee relationship and when you move to the house property then the basis of charge is section 22 that says that if you have you must have house or you must have property and land and building or uh, building if uh, if there is a land you cannot uh, charge tax on that in under house property you have to charge tax on it in the any any other different head okay and in capital gain the first section is basis of charge okay what it says the basis of charge section 45 says you must have the capital asset the first thing you must have the capital asset and the second thing he second thing is you have to transfer that capital asset the first point is you must have the capital asset second thing is you must know that what uh, you have to transfer that capital asset and the third thing is there must gain arise there must there must be gain arising from the transfer of the capital asset it means we have to understand the three things in the definition the first thing we need to understand is capital asset and the second thing it was is transfer then what is capital gain and how to calculate it so basically there are three things we have to learn in this video but these three things are too much bigger because the uh, capital asset in itself is a too much big topic and the definition of capital asset is given under section 2 subsection 41 okay let's understand the meaning of capital asset and what are the capital assets and what are not because income tax department says these are the capital assets and these are not the capital assets okay let's start to understand the meaning of capital asset okay this is the basic introduction as I told you, uh, the sorry, I told you wrong section. That uh, real section is two subsection forty. It means any property, any property held by SSC, any property held by SSC, whether connected to the business or not connected to the business profession. Point number one. Uh, uh, in, uh, we included every tangible asset, intangible asset, every investment plant machinery building anything else when you are selling your personal asset or any business asset then gain arising on that asset is uh, included in under the head uh, capital gain okay and the second thing is any security held by FIIs what are the FIIs when the foreign investor when the uh, uh, cross border investors form a group and comes to the Indian market and buy in a bulk, we call them FIIs, Foreign Institutional Investor. Basically, FIIs control the market by purchasing the assets, purchasing the shares or debentures or bond in a heavy quantity. And when they buy the stock market, automatically raise level up. And when they sell their quantity in the market, there may be panic selling, there may be heavy selling, or we can say there may be bloodbath in the market when the FII started selling their stocks okay so it means we have to cover the two things the first is property held by SSC whether connected to the business or not and the second thing is the securities held by FIIs which has been invented in such security according to the SEBI 
okay these are the assets which is covered under section 2 subsection 14 now we come to the point that what assets are not covered what assets are not covered under section 240 it means what are not the capital asset the first exception of the capital asset is stock in trade it means anyone is selling their product anyone selling their stock and he is unable to sell the full stock and some stock is read uh, rest at the end of year we call it stock and trade okay and we cannot include this stock and trade as a capital asset because every businessman has stock and trade okay and the second thing is personal effect what is the meaning of personal effect what is the meaning of personal effect personal effect that to say that movable property wearing appearance or furniture or any personal user items like your tv your washing machine why income tax department includes that personal uh, personal effects in the uh, except as an exception of the capital asset because you cannot get the gain on selling of that product if you sell your laptop or your tv do you imagine that you can gain, uh, you can get the profits on selling or your TV or your mobile phone or your new mobile phone? No, it's not. That's why income tax department exempted these products. Income tax department says these are not the capital asset and will not include it in your capital asset. And it means when you sell this product, there will be no capital gain. And that's why we, will, we do not calculate the capital gain on these taxes. Okay so what are the exceptions of the personal assets what are the exceptional exceptions of the personal assets is the personal effect that to say oh sorry ex exclusions is jewelry archaeological collections drawing painting sculpture any work of art why income tax department exclude this item from personal effect because income tax department knows very well when you sell your jewelry there must be capital gain when you sell your archaeological collection there must be capital gain it means these are some antique item and when you sell that antique item you must get the capital gain on that and the third thing is rural agriculture land rural agriculture land is also exempted from income tax uh, it means we will not cover rural agriculture land as a capital asset if you transfer the capital if you transfer the rural agriculture land we do not calculate the capital gain on it and the next exception is special bearer bonds gold deposit bonds and special bearer bond 1991 okay so these are the exceptions of capital gain so as i told you as per section 240 if you want to calculate capital gain you you need to understand the three things first first is capital asset what the capital asset is and the second thing you must know about the transfer and the third thing you know about the you calculate the gain on transfer of that capital asset when you get, when you understand the meaning of these terms only then you can calculate the capital gain on it and after that we can categorize we can segregate the capital gain into two different types first is long term capital gain and the second is short term capital gain and there are the different procedure that how we can identify that uh, it is capital it is long term capital gain and whether is it is short term capital gain and this procedure is different for the shares securities and for the land building and uh, for the other we can uh, categorize them into three categories and the first category is the land and building and the second is listed securities and third is other securities okay so i hope you will understand it please read it carefully and uh, we will i will tell you the next topic that is transfer in the next video and in the class also okay Thank you everyone.